How's everybody doing? Wonderful. Good, good. First John 5. And we're looking, uh, starting in verse number 17. And the Bible says, All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. And we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and the wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God has come, and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. We are in him, and that is true, even his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God, and the eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. So, Father God, we thank you for the Lord's Day. And, Father, we come today with prepared hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. We come, Father, today because we love you and we want to fellowship with you, especially on uh, the day that is truly yours, the Lord's Day. So, Holy Spirit of God, I ask that you would just uh, touch our hearts and, and illuminate the scriptures for us this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Verse 17 and 18, we talk about, you're going to talk about unrighteousness and sin that you'll find in, in, in these two verses. Uh, <coughs> we touched on this a little bit last uh, Sunday that we must know that all unrighteousness is sin. We touched on that. Thanks, Mike. That, the noise drives me nuts. We'll crank it up during the break time. We saw last week that and, and when it comes to the religious practices uh, of uh, our day, that uh, they say that there's small sins, big sins, white, black, uh, some are permissible, some are less permissible, some sins are acceptable, others are not acceptable. But biblically, all sin is sin. There's no category there. Now when it comes to morality, uh, you know, some people, you know, there is morality that's gross, uh, that's higher than others, uh, but sin is sin, okay? And, that's, and that has to be clarified today, all right? So we went over that. Secondly, in this verse, we must be born of God and put ourselves under the keeping power of God's Son. That's so important in our text today. Verse 18, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, now verse 18 can be a difficult verse. Um, because uh, the reason why it gets difficult with people because of the many translations of the Bible that are out there today. Okay? All I can tell you is be very careful of translations. Okay? Not all of them are accurate when it comes to the Greek language. Is she ready? I don't understand them. Oh, okay. Let me know. We've got, we've got a little surprise for you during Sunday school here. So, uh, be careful of the translations. Now, Verse 18 says, We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. Now, notice some other translations how this is worded. It says, We know that no one who is born of God sins, but he, and it's got the Son of God in parentheses, uh, who was born of God keeps him, and even one does not touch him. That's the New American Standard. And then you got William's translation, which says, we know that no one who is born of God makes a practice of sinning. You got that one. But the Son of God, who was born of God, continues to keep him, and even one cannot touch him. Then you got the Amplified Version. We know absolutely that anyone born of God does not deliberately and knowingly uh, practice committing sin, but that one who was begotten of God 
carefully watches over and protects him. Christ's divine presence within him preserves him against the evil, and the wicked one does not lay hold, get a grip on him, or touch him. That's why I don't like the Amplified Version. You ever try to memorize scripture out of that? Come on in. Hi. I'm just stopping in for a second. Come on, Kelly. <laughs> Kelly's going to invite you to a courage parade. So we got to talk about courage. So we'll be back later. Here's okay. Your invitation. All right. Thank you. She All right. She's got to go for courage. She's grabbing it. All right. <laughs> so we're all invited. Courage. Okay. Yeah. Now, in verse 18, every person has sinned and is guilty of sin, right? We can all agree there, right? No question about that. We have all ignored God, disbelieved God, disobeyed God, rebelled against God, even rejected God. Therefore, we are unacceptable to God. There's no question about that. We're alienated from God. Our sin separates us from God. And there's only one way that, that all this can come together, and that's through who? Jesus Christ and his forgiveness. All right. Notice, it's because of Jesus Christ's righteousness that we are accepted unto God. Not our righteousness. The Bible says there's none righteous. No, not one. So any righteousness that we have is only because of the position we have in Christ Jesus. Amen? We didn't earn our righteousness. We, didn't, we can't buy our righteousness. It is fully provided for by Jesus Christ. Amen? All right. I want you to know when this happens, when we're accepted by Jesus Christ... We, when we truly repent and put our faith in Christ, then we become free of sin. Amen? We don't have to habitually practice sin anymore. We're free from it. God does a most wonderful thing. How does he free us from sin? John 3 through 5, we become born again. From above and, he, and then thus we have a new spirit within us. Amen? That old nature is still there, but then there's the new nature of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, and that is how we get freedom from sin. And uh, so those, because the Bible says in 1 Peter 1.23, that being born again, not of corruptible seed, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. Amen. Which liveth and abideth forever. So praise the Lord this morning, our righteousness in him. And we don't have a corrupt seed anymore because we've been born again by the spirit of God. Therefore, because of that, we become new creatures in Christ. Right? 2 Corinthians 5.17. Behold. If any man be in Christ, he's what? A new creature. All things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Old things, old lifestyle, old nature. The old way of doing things. The old man, the old life. That all changes now. It all becomes new. We are new creatures in Christ, okay? And uh, because of that, uh, that's why we uh, are set free from sin. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, 24, he recreates us into a new man. I love that. A new man. And put, and the Bible says, and that you put on the what? New man. Doesn't say old man. Put on the new man. The Bible says, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness that's why it's such a it's such a hard struggle to strive for holiness because how did we live before we got saved we lived unholy and we go ahead we can still be saved and live unholy you know? I mean I, I don't yep. I think a lot of times we don't let certain areas of our life 
Well, if we don't, yeah. Certain, certain personalities, certain things that yeah. Do.